Coming up in today's video, we're going to be talking about some really big stories across WWE and AEW, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to have a lot to say uh, about AEW because this one is definitely a little bit controversial. Now, if you guys want more videos like this, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm going to put the timestamps in the description down below, but we're going to kick things off talking about WWE Elimination Chamber. And the reason why I want to talk about WWE Elimination Chamber is because it was very, very, very successful. In fact, WWE has issued a press release announcing that the 2023 Elimination Chamber, uh, which obviously was in Montreal, became the highest grossing and most viewed Elimination Chamber in company history. Viewership of the 2023 Elimination Chamber saw a 54% increase versus the previous record, which was set in 2022. It also marked the largest gate for any WWE event in Montreal and the largest gate in the history of Elimination Chamber. In addition to that, WWE's 2023 Elimination Chamber Premium Live event broke the all-time event uh, merchandise record and generated the highest grossing priority pass fan experience packages for any non 5 Big Five premium live events through WWE's partnership with On Location. Elimination Chamber sponsorship revenue was nearly up 300% versus 2022. And on top of that, Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn generated nearly 20 million views across WWE's social media platforms. So here's the thing, guys. WWE continues to spark tons of interest with their premium live events or pay-per-views, if that's still what you call it. But it's really important to understand that this didn't happen by accident. This is based on good storytelling. And, uh, you know, how do we know it's good storytelling? Because people are watching every single week, week to week, in hopes of seeing how the story progresses. And it just so turns out that the Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns storyline was so successful that it generated nearly 20 million social media views. So again, WWE is on an upward trajectory. Obviously, we're going into WrestleMania. WrestleMania is already breaking records. We talked about that months ago, and now it's expected even more records will be broken. Good stuff for WWE. Obviously, they really needed this. They were desperate for this type of growth. Uh, I don't know if desperate's the right word, but when you look at the fan reaction to Vince McMahon's WWE and then obviously to Triple H's WWE, there's a huge difference. And that's why Elimination Chamber is a sign despite it's like a B rated pay-per-view. You know what I mean? So the fact that a pay-per-view like this could still generate so much excitement is really telling. Obviously, WWE has something going right. Uh, in terms of quick analysis, I just want to say five matches on a pay-per-view versus 15 matches on a pay-per-view. I think I could speak for a lot of people when I say five matches, quality matches, quality storylines beat 15 matches. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think about that. Guys, we got to talk about John Moxley. AEW is pulling him off of an indie appearance because they want him on an AEW house show. Wow. So not only is AEW getting a lot of flack from people online because of the fact that they're pulling tons of indie talent away from their promotions uh, and their shows and their bookings so they can, you know, go to uh, ROH or whatever. But now the thing is John Moxley is being pulled from OTT, which is I think it's in Ireland. It's an Ireland based promotion. And basically, Tony Khan and AEW have decided to pull him from his upcoming booking in Ireland, uh, which is March 17th and March 18th. And instead, he is going to be performing at a house show in Troy, Ohio. Now, basically, this is where things get a little complicated. AEW had initially approved Moxley's independent performances during that period. Uh, still, to compensate for the cancellation, the promotion will supposedly send two other contracted talents, including Eddie Kingston. The report noted that OTT's St. Patrick's Day weekend Scrapper Mania 7 events were almost sold out before Moxley's scheduling conflict. Now, to Tony Khan's credit, he is sending other talent there in place of John Moxley, um, which I guess is fine. But at the end of the day, this idea of advertising talent, and I, and I just don't like this. I'm I'm a very I'm very 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 like I'm I'm a realist, right? If you're going to promote an event with somebody there, and of course Tony Khan approves it. And then Tony Khan later on decides, hey, we're going to do a house show or we're going to do a pay-per-view or we're going to do this. While I understand why Tony Khan needs his talent, I probably wouldn't be booking talent for indies unless you know what your schedule is going forward. Because the thing is, people are buying tickets to go see John Moxley. They're not buying tickets to see Eddie Kingston. Now, I think Eddie Kingston's a suitable replacement. But at the end of the day, fans are buying tickets with the expectation of seeing John Moxley. 
and Tony Khan is pulling John Moxley for a freaking house show. Now, I understand that Tony Khan wants to make house shows big and whatever, and that's cool. Good luck. Obviously, house shows are, are, are a great experience for wrestling fans. I just, I don't know. I just feel like this is very strange, and it's a very interesting choice. And again, AEW talent being pulled from indie events, it hurts the indie company. And I understand both sides of the spectrum, but ultimately, Scrapper Mania 7, you know, should have John Moxley there, and he's not going to be there because Tony Khan wants to use him for a house show. Interesting stuff. I'm sure you guys will all disagree with me, but I want to know what you guys think down below. I want to talk about Trish Stratus because it appears WWE has canceled the return of Trish Stratus yet again. Uh, she was backstage WWE Raw last night, and then according to Fightful Select, uh, WWE had her leave uh, because basically they changed the idea for the se uh, the segment and it was just simply a creative change. Now, Trish Stratus going to WWE, to me, I feel like it's definitely going to happen. I think that is something we should all definitely expect. I think WWE is, again, carefully planting stories. Um, the only thing that I have to mention here, if WWE was advertising Trish Stratus and they weren't delivering Trish Stratus, that's a whole different issue that I'd have a problem with. The fact is Trish Stratus has only been confirmed to return to WWE based on online reporting, which as you guys know, in the past year or so, there's been a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of concern about some of the things that are being reported because WWE is not advertising Trish Stratus. I can't be mad at WWE for not bringing in Trish Stratus, but I do want to say if Trish Stratus is the plan, if she is the, if she is the plan, her return was supposed to happen the last week and then this week, and it's still not happening. I think WWE needs to be a little bit more cognizant of the fact that there are people who have these expectations based on these leaks online. And again, I'm saying they need to be cognizant of it because of the fact that people are reporting things. And obviously reports could be wrong or whatever it may be. And that's not WWE's responsibility. Let me make that perfectly clear. It's not WWE's responsibility to deliver something that fans are assuming based on the online reports. But I think if WWE knows that the storyline is for Trish Stratus to be in WWE, I would maybe lean into it a little bit with the, the promos or the social media stuff. I don't know. I, to me, it, it's, it's a strange situation because they're not promoting her, but we know she's supposed to be back. Now they've delayed it. Now they've canceled it. Now we don't know exactly what's happening. I fully expect Trish Stratus to be on TV. I expect her to be involved at WrestleMania. And we thought it was all going to be before Elimination Chamber. That's not the case. So obviously WWE needs to do something that makes them, you know, that makes them a little bit more, uh, I don't want them to leak it, but I want to see them more invested in the idea of trying to like promote it. Uh, remember the QR codes with Bray Wyatt? Remember all those different things? There was backstage things. You could do that with Trish Stratus. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. See ya.